Good morning, I'm Sophia Kai. Welcome to this news briefing of the 251st National Meeting and Exposition of the American Chemical Society here in San Diego. We're joined today by Dr. Norma Alcantar from the University of South Florida. She'll be talking to us about uh, using cactus guts to purify water. So Dr. Alcantar. Hi, Sophia, thank you for the introduction. Th thank you everybody, uh, good morning. Um, yes, I've been working on um, looking at the cactus mucilage. The, car the cactus mucilage is the gooey part of the plant. Uh, we have discovered that it has some properties to separate contaminants from water. Uh, it does it by different effects. One could be by aggregation of localization, um, and the other one is by in electrostatic interaction between uh, the molecules, so especially heavy metals can interact that way. Um, the research that we are presenting at the uh, ACS this year is about separating organic compounds. Um, these are compounds that usually give the fish smell to uh, farm fish. Um, this is in aquaculture uh, recirculating systems. You will see that there's a lot of bacteria. Bacteria produce uh, these organic compounds that they, they get absorbed by the fish skin and the fish tissue. And that gives, um, it lowers the quality of the, of the product and is a concern uh, also with biosafety. So what we have done is to look at um, ways to use the mucilage to separate these compounds. So we use it in two different ways, the powder and also embedded into alginate beads. And we have found it, we can obtain up to 50% removal. Terrific, thank you so much. And we are going to be joined by um, our colleague Faye Gua as well to answer some questions. Yes. So if anyone has any questions here in the room or <clears throat> online, if you could just wait for the microphone and state your name and affiliation. Welcome, Faye Gua. Hi. You made it just in time for the Q&A. <laughs> Hi, so it's Kath O'Driscoll from Chemistry and Industry Magazine. I mean, she's how much mucilage is available from cacti? Is this as a waste product from something, or would you actually have to farm the cactus specifically? And do all types of cactus have this effect? So let me answer the first question. Um, the piece th that we actually work with is the Opuntia ficus indica, is the prickly pear, uh, usually known also as nopal. This, uh, uh, cacti can grow abundantly, doesn't need that much water, and you can obtain um, about two grams of mucilage per pad, and it is really what we use in the lab, um, a minuscule uh, concentration. So um, we have done some calculations that each pad will be able to uh, clean over 100 liters of water. Um, so if, since also it grows abundantly um, and it doesn't require to take over uh, food crops, it's very sustainable that way. Um, most of the Opuntia family, for, to answer your second question, um, this belongs to the Opuntia family of cacti and um, all of them will have the mucilage and then will have the sugars that actually um, help to con clean the water. And I understand as well you're making a synthetic mucilage. Why are you doing that? Could you just explain a little bit about Well, um, it wouldn't be like a 100% synthetic. What we envision is to actually use um, the sugars from food waste or biomass that we, we can actually process those into the same sugars that are in the cactus. And then that way we can obtain a higher efficiency. So it's not really... Um, a synthetic uh, mechanism has, you know, has producing a polymer or something else, but it's really taking the sugars that are already in waste and then um, gear them to combine them so that we can produce a synthetic mucilage. Thank you. Got a question right on this side? Mm -hmm.
Katie Cottingham, um, ACS Office of Public Affairs. So I was wondering, how did you get the idea to use cactus mucilage to purify water? How did that come to you? Well, <laughs> believe it or not, it's a very good story. Um, it's actually uh, something that I own to my grandmother. Uh, it was uh, when I was in high school, she uh, asked me about my day one time that I came to visit her. Um, and I have told her what is it that we had to do in the chemistry lab. We were working with surfactants. Those are chemicals that can clean stuff from water, and they are usually in soaps and detergents. And I explained to her that it was a process where we put it in the water and it will separate some particles. And um, that's when she told me that she knew all about it. <laughs> and um, um, she, uh, I, it was, I was just surprised that she had said that. And I, I asked her how, and she said that when she was little, she was in charge of bringing some water from the river or a retention pond, and she was able to um, figure out a way to clean this water when, especially after a storm, they will have more debris. Then that day they will cook the cactus and they will add it to the water to separate partic the particulars that they have. So I always wonder why that happened um, and what was the mechanism that will help to clean the water. And when I arrived to USF, my lab wasn't ready and um, I had to find a project right away and you know I have a postdoc that I hired right away and he he had to work on something as well so um, he, he came with some ideas uh, using natural materials and then that triggered my memory about my grandmother's um, conversation so. we got a question right over here uh, Bela Buslik Office of Public Affairs ACS uh, I've seen uh, cacti, uh, uh, the mucilage properties of cacti used for, uh, for an old adobe churches at missions to, uh, to act as a, as a binding agent of, of all the, uh, the clay and everything that they used for, uh, for me. But th this is basically the first time I've seen, uh, seen it used as a, as a coagulant for water. Uh, in the south, there is a lot of a lot of okra being uh, grown, which has a lot of mucilage. In fact, most people don't like okra because it it's very slimy. Yes. Would uh, the mucilage in okra be applicable? Because that's that's really a very highly commercial product, much much more used than uh, than the cacti. Cacti are only available uh, out the, uh, out west Texas. Arizona or, or northern Mexico? Um, I am familiar with the mucilage from Agra, and it does have contained uh, some of the sugars that the mucilage has. So this will be one of the examples for, for making a synthetic cacti or oh, mucilage. Uh, so we can take this, the sugars that Agra has and then just complement it with the mucilage sugars that we know that they are containing this research. So no, yeah. The, this, uh, do you use uh, use the uh, the mucilage uh, as in a, in a raw form, or do you, uh, do you hydrolyze off uh, of methyl groups or something of that sort, uh, so you have some uh, some uh, ion exchange properties of uh, of the mucilage, or, or why? Uh, uh, like, of course, the less processing, the better the better it is for the commercial. So. Um was your question related to well, kind of like the structure? Basically, do you pre-process the, the mucilage before you use it, uh, use it for, for uh, as a coagulant, or, or do you just kind of chop, chop up the cactus? <laughs> and, and, and no, no, no. We actually have a patented technology uh, on how to do the extraction. We have been able to separate three fractions: one that is a gelling extract, one that is a non-gelling, and one that is combined. And once they, we finish with the process, we actually obtain it in a powder form. So it will be easier to then manipulate in any other processing um, that is needed. We also have been able to uh, create fibers out of it for membrane production. So we electrospin the cactus, uh, and we make these 
um, surfaces that can also be used for filtration devices. And just the research that we are doing with the Jasmine and MIB have been, um, have been geared to, towards actually doing uh, beads, so calcium alginate embedded beads with the mucilage to separate organics and um, dyes from water. Thank you. Can you just explain a little bit more about the mechanism for um, the removal of the organic compounds? Um, is that by electrostatic interaction? You talked about what is the electrostatics of the mucilage? Um, so depending on the uh, pH of the water, either will exhibit negative or positive uh, charges. Now with the organic compounds, it actually kind of like engulfs the the molecules. Um, so we had studied the structure for the gelling and the non-gelling extract, and we can see that it looks more like a lacy uh, pattern, and um, the, that's the gelling extract. The non-gelling will look more like a fishing net. So that actually, we believe that's uh, part of why um, it works so well for contaminants, because it can also uh, we're like fishing um, the contaminants out of the water just because of the structure of the mucilage. So they must be quite small s sizes, I suppose, the, the fishing net structure. Yes, yes. So we have seen uh, TM images, and um, the size are, you know, uh, Armstrong's resolution. Okay, thank you. All right, terrific. Well, thank you. Now you know if you're stuck in the lab, just ask your grandmother for research project <laughs> ideas. Um, so thank you all. The archived version of the session will be posted at bit.ly slash ACS Live San Diego. And please join us for our next press conference today at 1 o'clock on nanomotors that could help electronics fix themselves. Thank you. <laughs>